Welcome back to The Big Picture. My guest is Cassie Church, who's the Chief Nursing Officer at Oshai Children's Hospital. And what else? We're talking about the coronavirus and how people <laughs> deal with it. You know, that, what a surprise, huh, Cassie? I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, what, what is it about the, the virus that makes it dangerous? It, it, does it attack the lungs or the blood system or the, the organs? Tell me what's dangerous about it. The most dangerous thing is what it does to the lungs. It's almost if you you picture, you know, kind of a, a cartoon of lungs or um, an x-ray of somebody's lungs and almost picture um, a little virus like encapsulating those airways and sort of covering it up so it therefore creates a terrible pneumonia. In healthcare, we manage emergencies by going by the A, Bs, and Cs, so airway, breathing, and circulation. If you don't have an airway, get them an airway. If they're not breathing, help them breathe. If they're not circulating, help them circulate. So in this case, the pneumonia is so severe that it's causing all these respiratory issues. Um, there is multi-system involvement. Um, there is a clotting um, component that comes along with it um, that is you know, actively being investigated. We're not really sure of the exact way the virus is attacking um, sort of the, the way our, our blood clots and circulates, but there's definitely sort of some clotting factors, which of course can affect the heart and the brain. But in general, it seems to really start with the lungs and attack the lungs. Um, subsequently hurting the heart and the heart and the kidneys are sort of partners in crime in our body. Um, and so clots that come through the kidneys can cause a little bit of kidney damage. Um, think of it as a, as a terrible, terrible pneumonia that has the side effects of a terrible, terrible multi-system organ disease. So if it, attacks, if it attacks the lungs, that reduces your capacity to get oxygen into your systems, into your system, and that will probably um, reduce the ability of the rest of the body to, to, to be healthy. I, I guess that yeah. maybe sums it up. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's, there's a number of things that we're doing here from a respiratory standpoint that are sort of cutting edge. Um, a lot of people have heard about from intensive care units around the country, um, putting adult patients on their tummy instead of on their back while they're ventilating, um, which is counterintuitive to most of what we do in medicine. Um, but it, really that repositioning and almost think about if you are being mechanically ventilated and your lungs really need to sort of move that gunk around to get it out, the repositioning helps. We're also using inhaled nitric oxide, which is, um, it helps dilate the blood vessels in the lungs to help improve the circulation, which therefore improves all those other system effects, if you will. So there's a lot of things happening to hopefully decrease that sort of pneumonia experience and improve upon what the rest of the body is experiencing. Now, in a situation like this, you hear different opinions and you know almost everybody has a different opinion mm -hmm. and you hear the governor saying one thing and the Erie County executive saying one thing and I just saw a video from a doctor uh, in, um, in Riverside California and it was a rally and he was representing uh, according to him he was representing hundreds of phys physicians around the country who basically hadn't had a chance to get their opinion out, and, and this is what he said. What if the experts are wrong? What if quarantining the healthy doesn't actually save lives? What if wearing a mask in public is not effective? My name is Dr. Jeff Barkey, and I'm here representing thousands of physicians across the country whose voices are being silenced because we don't agree with the mainstream media and the experts who are telling us what to do. And I, I think we were talking before, um, during the break, and you said nurses have this discussion all the time. You know, is the lockdown the way to go, or should we just protect the vulnerable? The, the, the elderly and people with health problems and let everybody else go about their business. Yeah, uh, we do. We talk about it all the time. I mean, you know, um, mothers of young children will, will appreciate the concept of like a chicken pox party where you think like, okay, I'm just going to go expose my small child, get chicken pox over with before they remember. Hopefully it's, it's quick and easy and, and be done with it. And you know, in healthcare, we kind of have to make light of certain situations and you talk through all of these scenarios. And I would say that uh, having a, a COVID-19 party sounds incredibly dangerous because we cannot predict 
whether you or I are going to be the ones that ends up on the ventilator with that terrible, terrible course because it's really unpredictable. So I think that the physical distancing here in Western New York has shown evidence of working. I think that it is our duty as a community to protect the young, the elderly, and the vulnerable. And if that means wearing a mask for the next few months until we figure out what's next, then that is probably the right thing to do. The best thing to do, you know, if, if we had done a true lockdown and, you know, truly have not seen another human for the last 30 days and 100% of us had done that, uh, I would think that that would work, but uh, we're humans and that doesn't work. And I'm the first one to say, I need to be around other people to feel like me. So I think it's been incredibly hard on everyone. Um, yeah, well, but in general, yeah, wash your I, hands, Dave. Don't overdo it when we reopen. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this big picture. It's been an interesting discussion. And I, and I, I thank you for your expertise and your knowledge. And you know, the nurses are the hometown heroes. I mean, all the first responders are doing, they're stepping up and they're doing their job just the way they always do. And we really appreciate that. Western New York is lucky to have you people. And it, it really, it's a, it's, a, it's a blessing to have the type of professionals that we have in this area helping out. So Cassie, Cassie Church, I, I, I want to thank you for being my guest on this big picture. Uh, we'll check back again with you as the situation unfolds. Hopefully it won't be too long before we get back to whatever the new normal is. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching the big picture. I want to thank you for watching WBBZ TV, as always. This is your TV station, your local TV station, and we will see you next time on the big picture. That's a cop car. You can wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he made a noise for us! We believe That our lives are changed forever Gonna take some time and patience For us to see it through Here's to you Here's to all essential people Who risk their lives and sacrifice While saving me and you And we owe you The sunlight is Once this dark cloud fades away, we owe you, we owe you, all your strength and all your courage, and we know it's not the only debt we'll ever have to pay. We stand behind. Behind the front lines of this battle As you struggle just to find a way In the place where you belong We recognize Your devotion to your service And your help that makes us stronger As it keeps us hanging on And we owe you Sunlight in the morning For our friends and all our families Once this dark cloud fades away We owe you For your strength and all your courage We know it's not the only debt We'll ever have to pay And we owe you The sunlight in the morning For our friends and all our families Once this dark cloud fades away And we owe you For your strength and all your courage And it 
It's only in America It's a day 